Okay, I want to show a little product I got together for a project this last summer. Uh, I was working on a little off-grid camper project with a guy, uh, and things that didn't end up working out with that character, but uh, some of the stuff I'd scavenged and gotten a hold of involved how to set something up with kind of a classic styling and DC lighting that would be highly energy efficient. Now, one of the things you're going to run into is... Um, you know, depending on how you're trying to style something and what's kind of fashionable here in Portland is repurposing older stuff, especially if it's kind of like a, a steampunky type style. And realize that when you get a hold of antique fixtures or vintage fixtures or something like that, um, they're going to be cost prohibitive to sometimes make new fixtures or if you want that kind of le weathered look or, or antique look. Now this thing had this type of a fitting inside which kind of tells me that it was probably late 80s, early 90s, also with the printing inside here. Uh, it was a UL rated uh, light. So when we're trying to convert something like this over to DC, a lot of times you can actually wire these straight into a DC system. And as long as you're, you're black on your DC stuff, you know, usually black is negative, red is positive. On AC stuff, black is positive, white is negative. And you'll see that mix match in the RV industry because RVs sometimes use house stuff, sometimes they're using vehicle stuff. And your color code on polarity gets really confusing. You could reference some of my older videos on uh, DC lighting for RVs. The thing is that in RVs, a lot of those lighting fixtures, they're overpriced and not very stylish. It, it's just a reality that if something is for boat and RV as opposed to houses, uh, it, the market is less competitive and they are, they're not very competitive on price for, versus performance or what you're getting. And so when you're trying to do DC stuff, you know, the question is, okay, can we repurpose some stylish stuff from a, from a uh, building supply recycle type thing or a a takeout from, uh, you know, let's say this came from a house where we had changed out a lot of lighting fixtures. Uh, how could we make this a DC unit? Well, we could actually install it on a on a on a DC fixture like you normally would. Um, there's a little bit less danger of, and of course, is the codes generally don't apply if it's on a trailer, or or some of the off-grid cabin stuff. You know, if undersized building. So you would splice this and, and either wire knot or, or use an automotive style splicing connector on this where your black is your positive, your white is your negative. Now on a light bulb, the center is your positive, the outer rim is your negative. That's, that's how this works. So if you were actually looking at cigarette lighter plugs, very similar theory, they're just not compatible. But the center is your positive, your outer rim is your negative. Now some people do use normal light bulbs in a 12 volt application and they seem to think that it works fine. Uh, some are going to work that way and some aren't. A lot of times the only negative is that the filaments burn out a little bit more often. When you go over to LED bulbs, and remember what I talk about in off-grid applications, the poverty of power situation, LED bulbs normally, the ones that you would get let's say at Home Depot or Ace Hardware or Lowe's or one of those places, those LED bulbs, they all run on DC, but there's a small transformer inside of it that converts that house voltage over to DC. Usually 12 volt, but not always. Sometimes they're running on some kind of an oddball DC voltage, but you'll never know and you'll never see it because the bulb inside of the bulb has a small transformer unit that converts it over to DC. Now one of the things I've been looking for for a long time was a, uh, you know, some way of bypassing that so that you could get an LED bulb, a screw in LED bulb just to run on DC only. That way, when I wire something like this, a vintage light fixture, into a, a 12 volt DC, an off grid application, I don't have to change anything else and I don't have to run things through an inverter just to get my light bulbs to work. NetMeter Solar came up with a solution to this. Now these things are a little pricey. Um, I will check the eBay and some of the listings and all that. The company pretty much wants to deal through PayPal. They're, they can be a little tricky to deal with. Now they've also dealt with these charge controllers. I really like these. You just got to be careful not to overload them. 
and they used to be marked rated for 500 watts and it, they would burn up. Now I think they're rated for 300. It's the same unit and they don't burn up because people aren't, uh, you know, Chinese kind of like to overrate stuff. Now here they say this is a 6 watt bulb, which means it uses 6 watts of power. Uh, as far as the lumens or light, I've tried to get the camera to get me a good little reading on this and it's, it's gotten a little tricky with this camera setup. I'll, I'll probably do another video in a few weeks once I get this installed at the cabin. But I wanted to kind of show some people what's going on and what some of the options are rather than uh, having to do it out in the field at the cabin. Uh, use a little bit more of a studio environment here. But if you want to use vintage lights, fixtures, chandeliers, all that kind of stuff that uses a normal screw-in bulb, there's an option. Not very many options, but if you want to do that on an off-grid 12-volt application, you can. And it's using these net meter solar bulbs. So you're going to see these in future uh, videos, and you're going to wonder how I'm getting a conventional AC light fixture or chandelier to work in a 12-volt off-grid environment. This is how it's done.